we're going to hope that the iPad works the rest of the service. If it doesn't, we'll, uh, we'll respond and we'll then we'll go a cappella for the liturgy. We'll uh, speak the liturgy instead of singing it, all right? And we'll just adjust on the fly. But never fear, the Lord is still with us with His Word and His sacraments. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord, for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Because without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 18th Sunday after Trinity is from Deuteronomy chapter 10. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord which I am commanding you today for your good. Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all peoples as you are this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the awesome God who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him, and by his name you shall swear. He is your promise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in Him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, in the Spirit, calls him Lord? Saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Now from that day, Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So we're going to try this a cappella. Okay? And when we get it going, I'm going to run upstairs and reboot the iPad and see if we can get the music for the second half, okay? So we'll get you going. (laughs) Thee will I love, my strength, my star, worthy will I love, my hope, my joy.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't let Jesus' humanity fool you. The Son of David is also David's Lord. Yes, he is fully man, able to be tired and frustrated, even with us. And he is born of the substance of his mother Mary in this age, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, just like you and me. It is accurate to say that he is less than the Father with respect to his humanity. He is, after all, the person of the Holy Trinity who humbled himself to take on flesh and to be obedient all the way to the point of death on a cross. That Jesus is fully man, even able to die, ought not be allowed to cause you to forget that he is also, at the very same time, fully God begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, perfect God and equal to the Father with respect to His divinity, so that the Jesus that is revealed in Holy Gospel as fully man is also fully God. He is the Son who is also the Lord. He was David's son with respect to his humanity, but he is and remains David's Lord because of his divinity. So don't let his humanity fool you. Jesus is the Son who is also the Lord. But he's not just David's Lord. You claim that he's your Lord too. But for that to be the case, you must be willing to receive Him as He is, and not as you wish He were. Or to say it another way, you must receive Him as He reveals Himself, and not as you would have preferred that He reveal Himself. For Jesus to be your Lord, you must believe that the Jesus given to you in Holy Holy Scripture is the only Jesus that there is. And also, the Jesus that you need. Any attempt to turn Jesus into the Jesus you wish He were is no longer believing that Jesus is your Lord. It is to reduce Him and to strip Him of His divinity, to make Him merely human so that you might be His judge. Making Him your Lord. Deciding what of Him you will receive. Making Him to be the Jesus of your own creation. The Jesus that is there to do as you want Him to do. Thanks be to God that we are able to read today's Holy Gospel backward. That is to say, with the answer in mind already before the question is asked. He is both God and man. David's son and yes, David's Lord. Knowing that will save us from trouble. It will keep us from coming to Jesus and approaching Him as if He were the one on trial, having to justify His teaching to us as if we were His judge. Knowing that Jesus is the Son who is our Lord will cause us to come to Him so that we might learn from Him. To receive from Him. To live by faith which trusts the word which Jesus, our Lord, speaks. Not so for the Pharisees. It was they who thought they could put Jesus under their foot, cause Him to say something that would prove His lunacy so that they would be justified in their rejection of Him. But by the end of class, it was those who came to Jesus thinking they had all the answers who walked away unable to respond. While those who received His words are still today those who are always confessing the truth. To hear Jesus' words and to receive them is to have Jesus as your Lord. 
And it is this Lord Jesus who has always been the one who is speaking and by his speaking giving life and truth. By the word of God, you will remember, the world was spoken into existence. That's the Christ who is your Lord speaking before he even had a body. And in his speaking, there it was. Light on day one, to be sure, but he wasn't done until the heavens and all therein had been given and created freely as a gift through his speaking. Indeed, this Jesus come in the flesh and standing before the Pharisees is Lord in a way that they had never imagined before. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the Word of God enfleshed in a man so that the mind and the will of God might be revealed explicitly and made known to us without having to wonder. He is not a God that is far away about whom we have to guess, but nor is He tame. Come down to earth to pat us on the back and affirm us of our old sinful ways. Jesus is the man who is also the Lord by whose own spirit the prophets wrote. He is the one who authored the texts about which the Pharisees are coming to ask Him. Will they let Him be their teacher? Will you let him be yours? After all, you have certainly attempted to prioritize the word of the Lord as if there were any of his words which could possibly be seen as unimportant while still confessing him to be your Lord. But nevertheless, the way of faith is the way of those who have been given to by the Lord. It is the way of those who have received from Jesus what he has given in his word. While the way of the world holds Jesus at a distance. Deciding what of him and what of his word it will receive. Or accept. Or believe. Or teach. Or confess. (laughs) We understand the question of the Pharisees because we have asked it ourselves. Rather than receiving his word as he speaks it and allowing him to be our Lord, we often go the way of the world which holds him in suspicion and believes that there might be some of his word which is somehow not life-giving. We, like the Pharisees, can't wait for him to answer the question. If he raises one of his words above the others, Well, then he would fall into our trap and there would be words which would be less important. Words which we could dismiss. He's just another teacher like the rest of them, we would think. Take the good, forget the bad. But do not worry about hearing him as if he is your Lord. And aha! He begins to answer. We think we've got him. There is one of his words which is exalted above the rest so that we know which one of them we can then dismiss. Except that his words do what they do. They deliver to us something unexpected and way more than we ever imagined. Indeed, there is a word which is great. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. But then he goes on. To the one, he adds another because the first cannot exist on its own. The love of God requires the love of neighbor and so the second is like the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Both commandments hang together as if there was one word and one will of God upon which all the law and the prophets depend. To love God with all your heart and your mind and your soul is to love the neighbor who is the one who the one true God has given you 
as a gift. You cannot fear, love, and trust in God or call upon His name or receive His word as holy and then go and dishonor the authorities which the very same Lord has put above you or harm the lives which He has created or break the marriage which is an image of His own love for the church. And if you take for yourself what God has given to another, or speak ill of those whom he loves, or even desire to have for yourself the house, or the home, or the wife, or the children, the job, or reputation which the Lord has given to someone else. If you do not love your neighbor, and rejoice in what the Lord gives to your neighbor, and seek to help and speak well of your neighbor, in fact, you are denying the word of Christ, and showing that you do not love the Lord your God with all your heart. Whether we do it in our thoughts, with our words, in our actions, out of the weakness of our flesh, and without trying to do it, or whether we willfully choose which one of God's words we will allow to have its way with us, so that we can dismiss those others that we don't, like when we transgress the commands of God we are walking in the way of the world and are not walking in the way of truth rather than receiving the word of the Lord as if the word is from our Lord to transgress the law of God willingly or even in weakness is to treat the Lord as if he were the one needing to be judged as if we were His Lord. But in fact, apart from His Word, we have no Lord. And we are worthy to be damned. And should you wonder how the two commandments can hang together, all you have to do is fast forward to see how Jesus fulfills them both at one time and in one place. As he hangs on the cross, loving the Father with all his heart, he also loves you, the neighbor. And he shows that the law of God is given for your good, for as he hangs there, being your Savior, he is doing what the law requires him to do. There, as he hangs on the cross, Jesus is being David's son and David's Lord, do you remember when the Lord was angry with David because of his sin? The Lord sent to him a preacher. His name was Nathan. When Nathan had delivered to David the word which the Lord had given him to speak and had brought David to contrition so that he saw his sin and freely confessed it, I have sinned against the Lord. Then Nathan delivered to David another word, which was given to him as a promise, even if that promise assured the death of David's own son. The Lord has also put away your sin. You shall not die. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, The child who is born to you, he shall die. Do you see it? The son of David would die for David's sin. Do you see it? The son who would die in David's place to atone for David's sin was also acting as David's Lord, fulfilling his word of promise and performing the work by which the whole world, including you and me, are today redeemed. David's son, the fruit of his loins, is also David's Lord. He loves God by loving his neighbor all the way and giving his life so that finally we might understand that he means 
exactly what he says. When he is speaking, faith is always hearing and receiving from him whatever he is giving in his speaking. Whether it is law, or thanks be to God when it is gospel, what he speaks is for our good, and in his speaking he is always giving life. Whether it be in the beginning, as he spoke the world into existence, or still today, as he speaks to us and teaches us, through the preachers that he gives us, who themselves are speaking that which he himself is giving. David's son is also David's Lord. He's your Lord too. You will receive him only as you receive the word that he gives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The service continues with the prayers. I do have one prayer request to add. I received a text early this morning from Connie Corpening. On the way home from the wedding last night, she was hit almost head on on 52, but she sent me the text, so there's good news. She walked away with cuts and scrapes. The person who hit her uh, was life lighted to the hospital. So we want to pray for Connie and her recovery. She's going to take Monday off, okay? So don't expect her to be in the office. But we also want to pray for the individual uh, and others who were in the vehicle that, that hit Connie. We're thankful that the Lord has protected her from an untimely death. We gather our hearts in prayer. Please stand. <coughs> Almighty God, bless your church here in this place and scattered throughout the world. Fill all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with his love, that they might strive diligently to love you, one another, and all their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, gracious Lord, enrich all pastors in Christ in all speech and knowledge, that they would preach the gospel in its purity and administer the sacraments according to Christ's institution. Lord, in your mercy, merciful Lord, you know how Satan prowls like a roaring lion seeking to devour your children. By the power of your word and spirit, protect and defend those who are under Satan's attacks. Send your holy angels to be with them, that the evil foe may have no power over them. Lord, in your mercy. Generous Lord, we thank you for your delight in giving us all good gifts. Continue to bless us in both body and soul. Grant us generous hearts that we would support your ministry and mission among us and around the world with our tithes and offerings. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, give guidance, wisdom, and safety to Donald, our president, Mike, our governor, and to all who make and judge our laws. Bless all civil servants as they carry out their offices and protect them in the line of duty. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, Continue to be merciful to all those who are suffering under the burden of any illness or ailment of body, soul, or spirit. Especially Velda, Olga, Orlin, Beverly, Alyssa, Raymond, Vernon, Joanne, Marla, Delbert, David, Chuck, Pat, Terry, Chelsea, Connie, and the individual driving the vehicle. Strengthen and heal them according to your will and bless all the hands that care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, be with those mothers in whom you have given the gift of life and preserve the lives of those little ones whom you are already knitting together. Prepare both fathers and mothers to take up their parental offices and make their homes places that are sanctified with your word and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, 
You have given us holy marriage to be an image of Jesus' love for the church. So we pray your blessing upon David and Connie, now united in holy matrimony, that they would live together in this holy estate and their union be another image by which your love is made known in this world. Lord, in your mercy. These things and whatever else we need, we place into your hands, O Father, for you have instructed us to call upon you. Hear our prayer for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Maybe see. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.